So you all want to die? Then come on, step the fuck up! Members are from different backgrounds, such as developers from the roots from Virtual Fighter 3 to Super Monkey Ball. Nagoshi made, he was part of the major team that made Super Monkey Ball. It's really weird. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, and he also had uh, team members from uh, Panzer Dragoon and Jet Set Radio. This, like, Yakuza really represents a lot for the, uh, for the company itself. Like, there's a lot in here from, like, all sorts of people. That was a good way to lead off. So we're... Wow, when's the last time we were recording? It was too long. We were uh, talking shit about the Switch last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it has been Switch, a while. Switch is about to come out, funny enough, of uh, this recording right now, like, two weeks? In about... Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Is it two yeah, weeks? two weeks. Hmm? No, a week, maybe. Is it, it's it's, a it's well, February it's 25th right now. Yeah, well, Wait, what, what is date, it? March 3rd? Is it March 3rd? What date the podcast? It's the 26th of uh, February. Uh, it's coming out soon. Yeah, the third, so it's like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway. Movie, so. so anyway, we're not here to talk about the Switch. We're Nintendo for once. Wow. So, we're here to talk about the Yakuza series, or like it's known in Japan, Ryuga Gotoku, or the literal translation is Like a Dragon. And uh, Zero came out about a month ago. I wanted to talk about this around when it... About a week after it came out, but unfortunately... Uh, Jeremy had to go to the field and he was gone for a while. Yeah, I was, and I was I down and out. You'll also notice that one of our other members, Fred, he's not here today because uh, he's got obligations. He's found a new, newfound addiction to uh, he's Paragon. He's found a new love. He's, found he's a too new busy love. playing Paragon. That's he's, what making, he's, he's making out with his PlayStation 4 right now. Yeah. That's he's so like, yes, it. yes, yes, Paragon. So anyway, uh, so excuse us if you were like, I really want Fred here. Who? Uh, no, <laughs> so, yes, y Yakuza Zero has come out and it's gotten unanimous praise. Wait, wait, eh, wait. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Go on. <laughs> I thought you had. Uh, okay. So anyway, Yakuza Zero, uh, new, uh, not the newest title in the series because Yakuza Six just came out in December of last year. December. S I, I keep thinking it was the end of December. I believe it was like the beginning, like yep. December eighth or something, sixth or eighth. So anyway, uh, actually, Zero is a two-year-old game now. Oh, funny enough, and it's kind of really weird that it—not weird, but it's impressive that it holds up as well as it does for something that came out two years ago, and it's on the PS3 and PS4 in Japan. Outside of Japan, it's only on the PlayStation 4. So how long ago which, did it come out on PS4 here? It, in like a United month States. ago. Like a month ago. Month. Okay. It came out. It came out last month. Yeah. Here. So it, it it was already two years old, and it came here. Uh, so like again, it's impressive that you know it came out. And the state that it did, the fact that it's at 60 frames per second, 1080p, you'll notice uh, playing the game though that there's some screen tearing on the top, but it's not really like, I don't think it's the biggest deal, but at the same time, I, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, Zero came out, a lot of people love it. Like, the internet was going crazy about it. Even before, I believe, Jeremy left, you probably saw, like, people were talking about it, I think. Yeah. When the game uh, released, I know that I saw a few reviews, and like I thought it was crazy because like I'm not that first of all I'm not that like well versed or that into the Yakuza series. I I started with three and played played three and like it was a fun game, which was also heavily they took a lot of content out of it. But uh, that's that's another that's another story. Um, that the series like for a while wasn't that well known, and then Zero comes out because you know. Now it's got some sort of advertisement. People, it's being advertised, and people you, like are, people are talking about it. People are, you are playing. Mean to the tell game. me if you mean to fucking tell me that if a developer slash publisher, and it, well, publisher in this case, gives people enough time and review copies ahead of time, they can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. No. Whoa, yeah. No. Crazy. Oh, damn. Capcom's like, yo, you you guys didn't buy enough Darkstalkers. Fuck you. Yeah, seriously. You know, it, it's a wonderful thing when you do that. That's why I thought these companies, you know, they they do this thing called advertising and they hire people to advertise and start an advertisement well, campaign. Well, Sega's always Shit. had an issue with like advertising their games. You know? After the Dreamcast died, yeah. Anarchy like, Reigns, Binary Domain, Residence of Fate, like they all like had terrible. And those marketing. are good. Those are those are good games. Like, well, sort of Residence of Fate. That game's kind of anyway. 
So I we're here. About so we're talking. To, we're talking about talking about Yakuza. And yeah, it got a big marketing push, and I believe part of that is because Sega did the greatest thing of their lives uh, right. in a long time and bought Atlas. That was the yep. smartest move they ever did because part of the advertisement team was from uh, was from Atlas, and they they really were trying to push it out in the West. So good on them, you know, for getting that out here. Now, uh, people might be tuning in like, oh, so tell me, when did the game series start? Oh, thank you, random person. It started back in 2005. Right. <laughs> it can't, the series came out in 2005 in Japan. That, that guy over there, he asked a question. And then a year later, it came out here fully dubbed, and it didn't exactly do well, because Sega's like, you know what? What if we market this like Grand Theft Auto? Kids will love it. And they didn't. Twice. Three yep. times. Like, by the fourth game, they tried to market it like how it was intended, sort of, but it still wasn't working. I think the best... <laughs> it's depressing, but the best advertisement the game ever got was for Dead Souls before this, and Dead Souls was just a terrible game. You know, I remember uh, when that game was about to come out, or when it did come out, I would walk into GameStop, and you know how they played those advertisements on the TV and GameStop? Oh, yeah, that fucking and they had the pre-order, the pre-order bonus, like, advertisement for it, where it's just like, pre-order and you get this American, all-American for, outfit. For anyone who doesn't know, in Dead Souls, what GameStop teamed up with Sega, I guess, for this advertisement, they decided, why don't we have the American Anthem playing, and we have an American flag and a bald eagle over Kazuma Kiryu. And Better a be a hot dog in his hand. And in a in a Japanese town, he's a Japanese man fighting Japanese zombies in a Japanese town. There's nothing more American than that. And there's a there's actually a frame in that trailer that they just bust out apple pie. It's a single frame. It's hard to tell at first. Can't get any more American it. than that though. Like, anyway, you know. Dead Souls Dead Souls almost killed the series here. No joke. Thank God it didn't. So so, um, so let me ask you a question, Jeff. Yeah, just, go ahead. Just real yeah, quick. Actually, do you, because you don't you don't know anything about it, so it's a good thing coming well, from you. Do Do you think the popularity of Yakuza in the states actually came from like proper advertisement, or was it more like a like hey, started off as like you know a little cult thing, and then like word got out, word got out, word got out, and it's one it's, of those things that like was underappreciated, and then people just decided to appreciate it one day because of all the shit they hear from other people. I okay, you guys have known me long enough. You know I've talked about this series. Oh yeah, like a lot. I've talked about this a lot, you know, and I've always tried to get people into it. I um, I remember trying to play the demo with our friend Edison, and uh, we, we weren't feeling it, and one day I just randomly got three, and I'm like, this, why? Why didn't I do this before? Anyway, it's actually a bit of both, to answer your question. It's a bit of, there's been a cult follow, a strong cult following here of people uh, that have been into the series. It's, it's small. It's still not that big, even after Zero sold so well, you know? Yeah. You can't expect, like, the world after a single game. But um, there was a strong cult, cult following for it, definitely, and Sega knew that. It just wasn't enough to generate revenue, unfortunately. And Sega doesn't know how to advertise properly anymore. Uh, for the most, you know, well, did. Uh, but I'd say it's a bit of both. Uh, what with the big marketing push and Zero, just the way Zero was shown off was perfect. They did exactly how you should have advertised it. They showed off the wacky shit. They showed off some of the serious stuff. They wanted to make sure people knew that this game... That zero, <clears throat> zero means a lot too because this is like, this is the uh, start of the story. This takes place back in 1988 when Ka Kazuma Kiryu, the main character of the series, is 20 years old. He's just like he's a new Yakuza member, and it also stars Majima Goro, who is a character who's in the series as well. But we just know him as this crazy psychotic asshole who's always wanting to fight you and challenge you, and. Um, Having him, having both of those characters playable when they're younger, because Majima's just four years older than, than Kiryu, right? But he's had more time, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to go too much into like the story stuff because I don't want to spoil nothing, but a lot of what happened in Yakuza 4 story actually affects what happens in Zero. Okay. But if people, are, if people are wondering what's a good starting point, actually, my recommendations, if you don't want to go back to the PlayStation 2, and I totally understand that, going back to older titles can be a bit of a drag, having to get your system out. Me, I, I've i been playing the uh, 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 2, so I don't mind going back. Because I started with 3. I didn't go back to 1 and 2 until recently. And uh, I don't regret it. I'd say start, if you're going to start with anything, start with 0. 
or go go to one. You, know? you don't or think three. that uh, starting from like zero would have any sort of like negative effect on anyone who's like new to the series? Kind of like I how people it, will be like, oh, which Metal Gear do I play first? Like, do I play Snake Eater, or do I play this, or do I just right. go in like the order it was released? So, that's a good. That's actually a fair point you made. Unlike Metal Gear, it doesn't feel so jarring when because Metal Gear. All right, this is really weird to say, but I don't know how to put it. It doesn't feel like there's a distance like that. Like if you were to play Metal Gear in like the time order, if you were to go to Metal Gear Solid Three to the new one, it doesn't feel as weird because each game, because each game centered around combat, right? Like that's their the main thing. You guys have seen it how like combat's such a pivotal part of it. It stayed majority. It stayed the same over all these 10 years mostly except when um, the combat changed with Ishin the Japanese only title mm -hmm. uh, they added in three styles that you can switch through so when Zero came out Majima and Kiryu both have three styles technically they have their fourth hidden style you can unlock and uh, the, so it's eight styles between characters uh, that, you know, that just adds more to it. And those, but the, the three styles that they each individually have make up into their greater, uh, into what their styles would become. And you can see that if you played the games. But no, it's not nearly as jarring as if you were to play Metal Gear Solid uh, in time order. It actually doesn't feel too, like, because I went back to one and I'm like, yeah, one's really flawed and like kind of janky, but you could still like be like, oh, okay. This is where he learned his shit. It doesn't feel as jarring. Okay. It's really, it's difficult to explain, but even if you start at zero, because yeah, the gameplay's really different, and because uh, if you go back to one, it'll feel really barren, but it doesn't feel too bad, because also keep another thing in mind, these games primarily take place in one place, the entire series just about. They've added places, but it's much, uh, the majority is in Kamarocho, which is the red light district of Tokyo. It's a made-up um, name for the town, but it's an actual place that exists in Japan. Um, oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't feel... Because with Metal Gear, you're always going all over the place, right? You're never in the same spot. The, you, when we went, when we played Metal Gear Solid 4 when it came out, it was it, it felt really cool to go see Shadow Moses again. With this, it's like you keep going to the town each time. So it's a little, it's a little like, it's not that exciting. Because you're like, oh, yeah, this place. Yeah, I've been, I've been here like No, no, there's the thing, or... though. You you think that right? You're going to the same place all this time. No, actually, each time you go to the place, they add in stuff to the to the city. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, for instance, there's this place where all these bums hang out. That's called West Park. And throughout the ten years this game has been going, in each game, West Park keeps getting like remod. It, there was bums who lived there, so in the first game, it's just inhabited by bums. Imagine like Tent City in Lakewood, right? So. A year later, they kick all the bum the bums out, right? Just like because up in New Jersey, for people who don't know, they're uh, they kick all the bum they kick all the bums out, and you're like, all the bums are gone. They're cleaning up the park. So the next game in Yakuza Three, they're actually starting to have plans to build a hotel right there. So Yakuza Four, you can see all the construction going on, and you actually get to see it that it's like an empty lot now. And in Yakuza Five, you get to see the finished product. That's you know, it's okay. funny that you say that because like. It's it's it, the game like starting from Yakuza One all the way through Five and now Six is like time's passing in between each one of those games. Obviously, they're not going to stay in the same time frame. So it's just like, of course, they're going to expand on every like on these areas. It makes sense, just like in the real world. You know, over time, there's going to be expansion. Uh, things are going to be added. There are going to be changes to things. And also, I wanted to mention like in Yakuza Three. It wasn't just Kamarucho. There was also Osaka, if I remember correctly. You, it was a, no, it was an Osaka. In Yakuza what, 3, it was o Okinawa. Okinawa, excuse me. Why did I think Osaka? Sorry. Not Osaka, because Okinawa. Osaka, you do go to Osaka and the other games. That's why. But yeah, uh, Okinawa is what I meant to say. Uh, there's like, It's not as big, but I know that there's a, there's an area there that you're at for at least the beginning of the game and probably at a later point. I don't remember. It's a beach. It's a beach. You're... You're in Okinawa, but you get to go to your orphanage that you run in Yakuza 3. So speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of expansion and getting with the times, with the progress of the game, the games... Wait, they, before, uh... I, before you go any further, okay. the other good thing about that, Matt, 
is that you're actually involved with the history. It's not just implied history throughout the game. You actually are involved in things that happen. And these characters, you'll have reoccurring characters from side missions. And they'll be like, oh my god, thank you for helping me last year. Now I got this other crazy thing going on. So you're actually a part of this city helping people and doing things that affect the uh, affect the later events in other games. It's, it's ridiculous. That's cool. So what were you going to say? No, I was going to say with the with the expansion and, and like progression of the towns and stuff that you live near throughout the games, I noticed that with uh, especially with Zero, you know, for someone who doesn't play the series, but I see like all your screenshots and stuff, that you're like in the arcade a lot. Do they like upgrade the like do they update the arcade machines for like the error or? Yeah, they do. Uh, there specifically, if you've noticed my screenshots in 1988, there were four well four games that you could play in Yakuza Zero. You could play Super Hang On. You could play uh, Fantasy Zone. You could play uh, Space Harrier. Why is the last one escaping? Is that the uh, the one with Upa Upa, whatever? Or my yeah, fan is it Fantasy, Fantasy Zone? Zone. Yeah. With, you have the little spaceship with legs. <laughs> so it's I don't really like playing Fantasy Zone. Oh yes, and Outrun. Wow, I can't believe I forgot that. But Outrun's like my man. Playing Outrun in, in a, a simulated arcade still, but it's it's amazing. It's really fun because everyone knows Outrun's soundtrack, right? Magical Sound Shower. That shit's to me. That shit's great. Hey, hang on, so, I had a pretty um, balling soundtrack. Yes, it did. Uh, it was super hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, funny enough, you have to befriend. There's two chicks, right? One in Kamarocho and one in Osaka. You have to befriend them to unlock those uh, other mini games, which is great. I love when Majima's like he unlocks Fantasy Zone. He's like, this isn't the fantasy I had in mind. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta befriend him to <laughs> unlock games. You're like, can I play that one? No. So, Why not? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, each of the, um, well, Yakuza One and Two don't really have. Yakuza Two has one uh, arcade game, but Yakuza One doesn't. All it has is like a claw machine. Oh. Uh, that's just, but that's the first game. You gotta cut it some slack. You know, yeah. they got what they could. That game was lucky enough to even come out. Ugh. Uh, but yeah, with the times, actually, Yakuza Six. Did I tell you, Matt, that it has Virtual Fighter Five Showdown and Puyo Puyo? Yeah, and it has Puyo Puyo mm. in the game. Virtual Fighter Five, the game no one plays. You're here. I hope anyone who's getting into the series from this podcast, or if they happen to listen to us, they fit a PS3 game into a PlayStation Four game. You know, it's what? funny that you said that, Matt. Uh, side note: People still play Virtua Fighter. The the community for Virtua Fighter is fucking huge. It's just mostly Japan. I, I was fucking around. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. So yes, each Yakuza game has. Well, you brought up the arcade stuff. It has mini games, and you think like, ah, oh, mini games. I don't fucking play those. They're actually really fun. There are a lot of in-depth mini games. The mini games that are in here, a lot of them. Some of them are Japanese, such as Mahjong, and. Uh, Ma uh, massage parlors, but uh, they're they're all really pretty interesting. You think like, oh, I don't want to play this shit. It, it actually gets pretty fun. It also gets really sad when you start losing a lot too, because the AI is really good on a harder setting, and it's not fair. Fuck so, you. So I don't mean I don't mean to like step back a little bit, but like, that Virtual Fighter no, is, it, is that like the only way you can play it on PlayStation Four? Yeah. Oh my I think god. Currently, yeah. Yeah, Could you not. imagine if they if they use that for tournament as a tournament <laughs> standard? Make sure you bring your Yakuza Six. But then again, I don't I don't know. It might be it might not be an arcade perfect version or whatever. I I, I have no idea about that. I will not uh, say whether it is or not. Although I mean, the fact that it's even in there is is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, just, it's just interesting. It's just like hey, like. The game's not available for PS4, but you can play through Yakuza. Come so the on. perfect Come the on. perfect reason you can start with Yakuza Zero is because it's like I said, it's a prequel, right? It starts when Kiryu's like just starting out. This is perfect for you to get more emotionally attached to characters that'll appear mm -hmm. literally in Yakuza One. It actually adds more weight to a lot of key characters. And because this is like a prequel, the writers didn't have to worry about who they killed off. And also, one of the really cool things, and if you're really into, like, crime, Japanese crime movies, all, every character, all the main, all the dudes you fight in this game, like the dude Kuze, like, they're real people. All these all these people in the game are real. Like, from the, because uh, Yakuza is known for this, but the AV idols who are hostess, hostesses, mm -hmm. they're, they're all, uh, those, yeah, those are all real women, except for, like, one of them. Uh... In uh, Majima's story, 
Yeah, they're all from what I yeah they they get actual fucking porn stars to be they, in their game. But they got actual real people for all everyone that's in the game. And there's these uh, two dudes in Kiryu and Majima's side of the story. They're they're basically horn dogs, Mr. Libido. I always forget how to say the name. Mr. Libido. Yeah, yeah. They're both Mr. Libidos, right? They have the individual names, but the one on Majima's side is ridiculous. He the guy who's just, he's just wearing a diaper, and even when he was recording his lines, he wore that exact diaper. <laughs> it's really like, yo, talk about a guy dedicated to his fucking job. Hey man, sometimes you gotta really get into the role, and you gotta really like, you gotta really sell it. So let's see. I also, oh yes, uh, I wanted to bring up uh, for anyone who's a Jet Set Radio fan. And yep. there's a one I was just ta- telling Matt and uh, Jeremy this because they're much more bigger fans of that than I am. Uh, the the person who did the soundtrack for those games is actually in Yakuza One. He makes a cameo appearance and he hands you a smelly business card because you had to help him out of a shitty situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought that was cool for Yakuza One. So speaking of Yakuza One, I will list off. Uh, I want to make a list on here of the games that are <clears throat> of each of the games that are out over the series t- 10 years and what they're on and uh, you know if you can buy them in the US or if you want to pick them up yourself. So you got Yakuza 1 that's obviously on a that is on the Playstation 2 and that is available here in Japan but you also have the remake Kawami uh, that will be out this summer actually for Playstation 4 but it's already out in Japan on PS3 and PlayStation 4. You've got Yakuza 2. Uh, that's I'm playing that right now, actually. Uh, it's on both uh, US and Japanese PlayStation 2s. you got Yakuza 3. That's available to us in Japan. That's only on PlayStation 3. Yakuza 4, same deal. Yakuza 5. This is... Oh, wait, sorry. Let me get... I'm getting ahead of myself. Yakuza Dead Souls. That's on PS3 and... Uh, uh, PS... Yeah, that's on PS3. Uh, Japan and uh, England, uh, Japan and America. Yakuza 5 is a bit, uh, unfortunately, it does not have a physical release here. It's only digital. It is physical in Japan, though. It's really a shame Yakuza 5 never got a physical release, because if there's one thing fans are asking for, is that's like one of the big ones. That's always been one of the big ones. And after 5, um, you have Yakuza 6, which is on the PlayStation 4. That's the newest game that just came out. Yakuza 0, like we mentioned, like, well, what I mentioned before, it's on PS3 and PS4 in Japan. Here in the US, it's only on PlayStation 4. Any game that has a PlayStation 3 version in Japan, whenever they bring it here, for, for whatever reason, Japanese developers or publishers are like, we're only releasing the PS4 version because, uh, I don't know, I guess money. money. So, those are all the games out here in Japan, but there's games that never came here. Such as Yakuza Kenzin, which came out in 2008, uh, a year before Yakuza 3, and it was, it's a test game, pretty much. I think it looks alright still. It's not too bad. I played it recently. Uh, I have to try to beat it. Isn't that one? Isn't that one its own like separate series? No, no. Hold on, I'll get into that in a bit. Okay. Uh, Yakuza Kenzin, which is like a dragon arrive. Get it? Because it's arriving on PlayStation 3. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Survive. Anyway, uh, it actually involves the story of Miyamoto Musashi, which is, I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, any of these uh, Japanese titles, they're all pretty neat, except the play, the PSP games, which I'll get to in a moment. I don't even know there was PSP games. Holy shit! Oh, oh there's two of them. So anyway, oh yeah. By the way, for Zero and Ishin, they were actually. Uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. So Kenzin's on PS3 in Japan. That's it. And then the next spin-off one is Ishin, which came out on the PS3 and the PS4. That was what they introduced the three different styles. That game's Japan only. I don't think they'll ever bring it here. And I think Seika's excuse is Nagoshi, I should say, the guy who basically made this he made the game, uh, him and his team. I think it's sort of a weak excuse that they keep giving that they don't want to translate ranks and history and stuff, because they don't think we'll get it. But way the samurai keeps coming here. So yeah, and those games are not nearly as good as this. Japan only the Yakuza's are chilling with the uh, Fantasy Star Online too. They're just chilling in Japan. No, see, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yakuza games keep coming out. <laughs> so anyway, Ishin over there is on the PS3 and PlayStation 4. 
it follows the tale of Ryoma. I always forget his last name, but he is one of the major key individuals in the actual Meiji re Restoration period. Uh, Jeff, you made me really sad by saying that we'll never get Fantasy Star Online too. Oh. Well, Al hey, Atlas is here. They could save the day. It's too late for that game, but go on. They make a third one, they're not. Well, that's probably not Anyway, it follows the uh, Sakamoto Ryoma. Uh, he's, a, he's actually a real figure in Japan. He's considered a hero. He was one of the key players in the restoration. And the game, actually, interestingly enough, the night Ryoma was supposed to be assassinated is actually when it takes place. He actually kills, like, he kills himself as, like, a body double or something, and it goes from there. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually have I actually have to play it a bit more. I haven't uh, given enough time. So that's the games that are only in Japan because uh, you well not not so far anyway. So six is coming here in 2018. I think waiting a year is too much, to be honest. I think coming out in the winter would have been a better option. But now yeah, what are you gonna do? Well, wouldn't that wouldn't that tie into a whole bunch of translation nonsense, like? Unless the game's already translated, but no, I just I don't know. Like I know I mean, it's I know I know certain companies I don't, I don't know. Well, usually translation's a big thing when it come when they when they like they bring these games over, and I know translation takes a while a while because like uh, either they just don't have the people or they I don't know. No, I just know it. I just I hear stories of shit like that taking a really really long time. So then we have. Um... By the way, for Ishtun and Zero, there were companion apps on the Vita. That We didn't get the companion app on Vita for Zero here, obviously. But uh, they're interesting. They help you with like fights, um, the mini-games that are in the games, uh, specifically the Coliseum shit in Zero. I don't know what it completely does in Ishtun, something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just companion apps, which was pretty cool. So there's two PSP games that came out. Uh, 2000 seven or something and uh that i can't it's kuro kuro Hio, i think or something like that anyway it translates to black panther and they're actually about a completely different character i believe majima is actually in these i don't think kiryu is and uh if you look at if, either if you guys look at the main character he looks like something you'd see out of like like out of like you ever see crows yeah like that like that boncho like uh you know that boncho style kind of character i tried yeah. playing the game and i just i don't know it, the combat didn't really grab me it's the combat's already kind of claustrophobic to begin with and i'll send you on the skype chat here a picture of the uh main character um I mean, the combat just wasn't grabbing me, so I didn't really play it for very long, and I couldn't really understand it because it's all in Japanese, of course. But fun fact, these games are made by the same people who made Def Jam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. heard about that. Def Jam is in, like, Fight for New York and shit? Yeah. Def Jam, yeah. Vendetta, and Fight yeah, for New York. Yeah, they're a Japanese developer. They made those games. What? Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that? You didn't know the guys who made those Def Jam games were, like, it was a Japanese... Those games are outsourced. You blew my fucking mind just now. Oh. Yeah, it was a Japanese developer that made those my games. That's why, they're, that's why the combat in the, those games are so fucking good. I, so, holy um, shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, needless to say, these games, like, the PSP games are alright, but I feel like if they actually did what, like, Square does with uh, Kingdom Hearts, where they make a, you know, HD version and, like, speed it, you know, get the frame rate up, I think it would be a better experience. And Honestly, I think the games could sell... I don't know if they could sell all right here, to be honest. Maybe. Depends. It's already hard enough to try to sell Yakuza. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's all the games that are out. There's really not that many. <laughs> to be honest, in a game franchise this uh, bit, uh, not it's not even that big. But you it's... know, it's funny that they put they put out so many games, and like it's been a little over ten years, and they put out quite a bit of games. Uh, just... 12, 12 years the series has been out. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, to make a note, Yakuza 6 is, uh, it actually beat out Final Fantasy 15 in sales. It is the, it is the best-selling PlayStation 4 game of all time. To be fair, Final Fantasy 15's been out for a little while, a little I'm just, I'm just saying, that had the best yeah, sales no. in Japan. That's, that's 
I'm, that's bonkers to me. Like fi- beating out Final Fantasy 15 in sales, you know? I just didn't yeah. expect... Because that game was so highly anticipated and stuff, you know? I just figured there's more fans for Final Fantasy 15 than there would be even in Japan for this, but I, don't know, I guess I was wrong. Yes. Um. So... Uh, yeah, that's that's all the games. Uh, like I said, not that many. The Japanese one, uh, the Japan only ones, uh, specifically Kenzen and Ishin. I wish they came here. We have better chance of getting Ishin than we do uh, Kenzen, though, because Kenzen's so old. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this, and I'm still upset at Sega. I they're not gonna do it. Maybe I hope, but there was an HD collection put out for one and two on the PlayStation Three and the Wii U. In Japan. So, yeah. the story with that is, uh, the Wii U version sold like shit. Like, complete shit. You know like how, um, what the fuck, that Lost Planet game on PlayStation 3 that Capcom put out? They didn't want to, tr- like, those games, <laughs> those g- that game sold like 18,000 units or some Capcom shit. Capcom claims that that game sold like shit, but yet they made three of them. And they sold, they, they sold, wait, really? Yeah. No, I'm talking about the anime one. That was only no. He's talking oh, the about, anime uh, one. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Oh. Uh, 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 Ex Troopers. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Ex Troopers. By the way, fun note about that: that game can't be translated without altering graphics. Because wow. those translations are hard, hard like pressed or whatever into the game's coding. That's weird. <laughs> that's a that's an odd oh. choice. Anyway, so, um. The HD collection sold fairly well on the PS3, but it sold like shit on the Wii U, and I'm thinking, like, why didn't you guys just put it out in America? It would have sold better. <laughs> I it really frust it really does frustrate me that they didn't release the HD collection here in the US. Well, their I first think mistake it was gotten... putting it on the Wii U. Fuck right fuck in, boys. in Japan. Like, come on. Um, I'm just saying, like, if. On it, let me ask you guys: Would you have gotten the HD collection of the game out here? I would have, personally. What? Uh, uh, Yakuza? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's Yakuza One and Two, and an HD collection. I probably would have dabbled in it because it actually improves the games a lot. They're at 60 frames, 1080p. They added in a lot of stuff that would be added in like later. Your checklist for your completion. It just plays better. The lock-on's better in Yakuza One. It's just overall better experience and I really wish Sega had brought them over uh, brought it over but uh, for whatever reason they just they just didn't it's very sad also um, what else was I gonna say I lost my train of thought for that uh, for what I was about to say oh right um, so with zero out um, it must have sold so well because Sega had two retailers, one on Amazon and one on eBay. How often do you guys hear about this happening? Where a retailer is like, okay, we we want to order copies of PlayStation 2 games and they get made. So because you that's what happened. Them? Yeah, they reprinted Yakuza. They reprinted Yakuza 1 to 4. Physically. The PS3 games I can believe because, you know, those PS3 is still being supported and all that. But PlayStation 2 games? What? Yeah, I can't say I've heard of that. Yakuza one and two were reprinted exactly how they were, by the way. They're fifty they're fifty bucks each, but Yakuza Ugh. two is going for over two hundred dollars. Yeah. Yes, they were yeah. I think Ooh. fifty dollars is fair for brand new sealed games. Uh PlayStation two games. I will say this though, for a for a game like Yakuza, if I were to uh just ignore it for the first like duration of its life and then like I picked up like five, six, or zero, and I was like, "Oh man, this game is great!" Like to hear that it's like being reprinted, I would have been like, "Bro, I'm on that." Like every, everyone has, everyone has their like their game series that like if they did that, they will do that. Like without yeah. even thinking about it. Well, I bought Yakuza two because I've never played two. I played one, exactly. I never played two. And I will tell you this: going into two, it's all shitload better than one. There's just so many fucking improvements. I was thinking about it's ridiculous from the loading times, like. Oh, it's just so so much better. It's it's crazy how much they improved, and it's only in a year. And they're essentially just using the same game twice, but they added in like a new area for you to go to. It, it's nuts. For um, 
for anyone who follows Sega, like this is one of their biggest franchises that they really they're really protective of. I think this is because they they don't seem very protective of Sonic, do they? Well, they 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 openly said that uh, like Sonic at a t- at times has like a really big negative stigma attached to him, and they're they are trying to keep that away from the other franchises that they have. I'm just, just, for, like, just for the heck of it. You've noticed that though, right? Sega yeah. like they they're not very protective of a number of the unfortunately of a number of their series like they should be, but Yakuza. For whatever reason, they're really protective of it. Like they don't want, you know, anything. They don't want any negative, uh, any negative anything from it, you know. So every time the games came out here and it didn't sell well, I can understand their, you know, lament to be like, oh, I don't, I don't know if it should come out here. But luckily, there was enough demand for five that it came out here. It was only digital, unfortunately. But what are you gonna do? Oh, and shout outs to my friend uh, Emma. For buying me a physical copy of Yakuza Five, like, oh uh, geez, like two years ago. Japanese. Yeah, yeah, of course. Just look Not at physical. it. Just look at it. Smell it. I do appreciate it. I need the I need the greatest hits version. Anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, with Zero Out, it's really doing good. Did you guys take a look at the link I sent uh, from the Game Informer interview? Yeah, I was looking at that. So it's pretty interesting, uh, you know, what they note about it. Uh, just trying to get it here was like was a task, you know. It wasn't easy because a lot of the things that they had to translate, and they want to make sure they get it just just right because they don't want to fuck this up. Because this is big. If Yakuza Zero had failed, like I think Sega would have just given up. Yeah. Uh, but Yakuza Zero sold so fucking well. It sold so well that on Amazon UK, I know specifically, and also I did see it on ours, it sold out. Like, there was just, it said sold out. That's crazy, dude. Like, there's no Yaku- there's no Yakuza game that's ever sold out here. It, and, it, you, you, and people can't be like, oh, well, Sega sent out only so many copies, because that's a lie. To Amazon? Yeah, you know, no. Amazon's got infinite copies or whatever <laughs> crazy. They, you know, they've Infinite always copies. Yes. They well, they've always got a lot of copies on hand. So to see that it sold out on there, and then you had to hear that one, one to four got reprinted. Like what? It's it's crazy. And I'm so happy to see more people get into the series and uh, uh, more people talk about it. But what's even more crazy is I saw people that were like, "Wow, I love Zero. So they literally, when they heard about the reprint, they ordered one to four. There were people just ordering all those. They're like, "Wow." Hey man, is, I'm just I'm just happy to see a company like Sega like you know do, doing doing relatively well. Good for them. Doing yeah. some doing something with their IPs. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just happy to see that. Like honestly, like I think Shamu, honestly like, a lot of a lot of it, hold on, we'll bring that up in a second. A, a lot Ooh. of it, um, a lot of this I think has to do with Atlas. Like Atlas is like because Atlas companies like Atlas, Xseed, and Nisa. Uh, Nipponon Ichi America for any of them that doesn't know. Uh, Nip- they, Nipponon N- Nippon, Nip- Nip- Nippon. Anyway, they know the U.S. market really well, and they understand the cost and uh, how many units should be sold and shit like that. So it's good that there's companies like that around to help Jap- bigger Japanese companies understand, guys, it's not like it used to be, but this is how the market works. Okay, this is how many projected sales you should expect. Because you guys remember for a while, Japanese companies, big ones like Capcom, Sega, Square, they were like expecting millions upon millions of dollars back from their product. And they were starting yeah. to get upset from the from the lack of sales. And it's like you guys gotta have like you gotta you gotta just tone it down on what you expect from your consumers over here. Yeah, they I, were I know, I know, like it was a, it was only a few years ago that a lot of these companies they were they like you said, expecting absurd Fucking numbers. That's from why games. video game That's developing as of late has has seemed to be like it seems to be like a very like risky business and like you, all game doesn't sell well half the fucking studios let go this doesn't do well you know you you gotta go or this oh we sold like. 50, 500 million copies but we wanted 600 million gotta let you go yeah that's that that's that Japanese mentality is fucking nuts it's like well, it, just, re- it just kills let- me. Let's rephrase that. That's that Japanese businessman mentality. Those higher ups, those CEOs in those companies. Not really so much the developers, because the developers are they're usually the smart ones that'll be like, Hey man, you can't expect these kinds of numbers. 
Whereas like I've, you got uh, these these higher ups in their companies that are just like, no, we're getting these numbers or we're done. So isn't it crazy that games like Neptunia get out here, they get fully translated in voice? Yeah. With limited editions, like, because you see that those companies clearly understand their market and they know how to. Yeah. Like with remember with remember with Atlas with Catherine, people were worried about that game coming over here, right? And they're like, is it going to come here? And Atlas announces it. And then they announce that pizza box edition with the shirt, the underwear, the body pillow. And it was like, I remember Jeff the Hero saying Atlas understands their market already. <laughs> and it's true. It's it's good. I'm glad there's people like that that have the foresight with the uh, U.S. market. It's not the biggest like Japan like they would expect, but there is a good amount of people. There's a healthy success rate for these things. You just have to be able to pace yourself with it. So, uh, Shenmue. So, I want to bring something up. Might be an elephant in the room. Is that uh, these people think of these as like a spiritual successor to Shenmue. And they have a lot of the designers who were on the Shenmue team. With AM2. Uh, with, um... What the fuck? Yu Suzuki. So... I wouldn't say these are spiritual successors because these games strive for very different things. I actually think Yakuza is better than Shenmue. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I wouldn't really call them that necessarily because of how different they are and how much. Like, because yeah, I, I know, like me and you had a conversation about it the other day, or maybe like a week ago, and I was like, for someone who doesn't play the Yakuza series at all. Like I look at that, and then I look at Shenmue, and I'm like, I'm I'm part of the ignorant masses. That's like, these two games look very like they look alike, but are they alike? No. And I and I know you gave me like a you gave me like a whole spiel about like the differences and everything. And I was just like, you know, they're coming from the same they're coming from the same company and stuff like that. So like for someone like me, I I just thought to myself, oh, they're like, oh, Yakuza, you mean Shenmue like like 2.0 or some shit like that? I don't fucking know. No, no, it's this is much. Well, they strive for too many different things. I can't really say that it's a spiritual successor. I can see where people are coming from, but I think the worst thing is when like people are like Japanese Grand Theft Auto and people who aren't joking about it. They're fucking serious. There was this video I watched. This jackass was like playing Yakuza Six, and he knew nothing about it. He just jumped into it and he started doing the most racial slurs you can think of in the video. He was saying, oh, you sleep with my wife. Now we must duel. Stuff like that. And I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, this, this fucking, like, he had a douchebag haircut, too. <laughs> so anyway, I really, because if you look at Grand Theft Auto, and by the way, people, there was a video I saw someone actually put the combat up of Grand Theft Auto and Sleeping Dogs. Have you guys, you guys seen the combat from those? They're not exactly, uh, well, I, I, played sleeping dogs yeah i know but the combat is not very i don't know at some points it's not exactly the best what in sleeping dogs yeah it's all right combat's like one of the best things about that game and it's it's actually really good like do you know do you know how the do you know know what the combat is like in sleeping dogs have you played it yes i own it okay the combat in sleeping dog is literally like batman arkham asylum Alright, wait, let me, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase it. It's not. I don't think this is as exciting as the Yakuza 1, as the Yakuza's combat. That's what I think. Because the okay. game, like, a, the whole game, centered, like, it's built around combat. Those, like, Sleeping Dogs isn't really built around its combat. It's built around an open world, right? Same thing uh, with Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, well, no, Grand, it's, got, it's got the open world, yeah. Grand Theft Auto's combat is... I don't know. Like you guys ever try to play con? You ever just try to fight someone in Grand Theft Auto Four? There's there's no like hand to hand comp. I mean there is in the game, but it's not like that's not what the game's meant for. It's just the thing that it's like it's like the game in Grand Theft Auto you have all kinds of weapons and your fists are literally one type of weapon. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like the bare minimum. That's like <laughs> you, like like a deprived in fucking Dark Souls or something. You're running around in a fucking mowing cloth with nothing. Well, Grand Theft Auto is also the kind of game where uh you can literally chase a bad guy, beat him down, get like uh what is it, what do you call that shit, a uh, Citizen's Arrest Award, and you can keep beating him with the bat and keep getting money, while the cops sitting there <laughs> watching you beat the dude with the bat. So, it's really, it's just really annoying, because some people were like, in the comments of that video I watched, oh, Japan finally made its own sleeping dogs, and I'm like, 
Do you guys know where Sleeping Dogs takes place? Are you fucking morons? Like, well, especially especially considering Yakuza. Wait, no, I was gonna say Yakuza has been has been around before Sleeping Dogs, but that's a whole other argument because Sleeping Dogs before it was Sleeping Dogs was true crime Hong Kong, and that was a long time ago. You mean L Streets of L.A.? That was the first one. Right? True Crime Streets of L.A. was the first one, but Sleeping Dogs originally, because originally it was it was True Crime. Uh, um, yeah, True Crime uh, True Hong crime. Kong. Um, but that game was in development for so long, and like it just kept changing. They never finished it, and it just well, kept we changing. Well, we can't. That would be that would be unfair. Though. Until they finally were just like fuck it, Sleeping Dogs. They renamed it and uh, just I'm started just, from the ground up. Anyway, my point is. That would that would be unfair to say that that, that game has been out. That game was, you know, one's out longer than the other because dogs didn't come out until when the hell did they come out? 2011, 2000, 2000? 2011, well, 2012. One of those two years. I don't. Remember. Anyway, so they're obviously these three games are very different from each other, and it's like stop comparing them, especially saying sleep. Like I just don't sleeping dogs. Like what are you all fucking idiots? They're two different places. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else can I mention? I don't know. Do you guys have any questions or anything? I uh, I got nothing. So I brought up uh, the whole like when I asked you, what do you suggest playing it? Like in what kind of order? Like release order? Or, or, oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. But like the story. Cause I, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna keep bringing up Metal Gear, only because it's like the only game I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe Kingdom Hearts as well. But Resident Evil, Resident Evil too. But like with with Kingdom Hearts and like and Metal Gear, I'm not gonna say anything about Resident Evil because I'm not too smart in that. It doesn't their, matter what you play Resident Evil. Their stories are like you know so complex and convoluted that in my opinion, like you know playing it out of playing it in the release order. In my in my opinion, it makes more sense than playing it like in the like, I guess like the timeline order. With Yaku with a yeah, with Yakuza, I would imagine that like the story is not so complex and convoluted that like that's an issue if you play it either or. See now, no, I, like I, I, I don't think it is. I was gonna I'm gonna like Jeff, you can correct me on this. Um, yeah. Since you know, I was gonna say like from my understanding with the Yakuza series, it's like each game is like. The story in each game is like it's its own thing. Like there's obviously like the I guess the the lore and the characters that appear throughout the series, but from what I'm not understanding is like it's it's each each game has its own kind of thing going on. Uh, from yeah, what I not, from what I understand, you're, you're, it, think like JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. They have they have their own each game part has its own dedicated story, but like JoJo's. If you've read the, if you've read it in, you know the first, if you read the first one, then you read later, you'll get more satisfaction out of it, like any other series. But yeah, you can honestly jump into any game because they all have a different story that centers around those characters in that game. But if okay. say you were to, ju I would not say to jump into Yakuza Five because if you jump into Yakuza Five, because there's a lot of, there's like several characters that reappear, but the the four characters that come back, Kiryu, Sejima, Akiyama, and Haruka, those characters have been around, uh, two of them have been around since uh, Yakuza 4, and one of them was in Dead Souls as well. But Kiryu and Haruka have been there forever. So you might be like, oh, I so don't Kir even get Kiryu this. is the main character? In like yeah, everyone? Ka Kazuma Kiryu, yeah. So, Kazuma so, Kiryu. So Kazuma, there's, there's never a point in Yakuza where it's like, Let's say you're playing like Yakuza Five, and he's like, "Hey man, remember that time? This many years ago, we did this, this, and that. Remember those details? Gonna need you to. I need you to put that pin number from Yakuza Three." And he looks at the camera, <laughs> and then he is like, "Remember? Do you remember? Like, like uh, there's, there's no moments like no, that. No, no, right? there's nothing. There's nothing. I know it's you a bit of an exaggeration, I mean, but still. When, okay, wait, wait. Imagine there's a. Like, Kazuma Kiryu looks at the, at the camera, and he's just like, and like the guy's yelling at him. He's like, "Do you remember from back then?" He's like, "Flashback." <laughs> So, all right. Um, let me give you an example up. here. If if you start in the zero, it's perfectly fine because everything it's a prequel. But there are some sub quests, uh, sub uh, sorry, sub stories in the game 
uh, there's one where Kazuma goes to see a fortune teller, and this fortune teller starts to talk about Yakuza 3 in particular. It's like, you're gonna go to Okinawa and run an orphanage. I'm like, holy shit. Like, you're just talking about... You're talking about the plot from the other games. It's like, you're gonna run to a girl that's worth 10 billion yen. He's like, 10 billion yen? That's not even a number to the Yakuza. Christ. <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that that, you know, you, you get more enjoyment out of it if you've played the other games, but... There's really no big issue with starting at any game that you choose. Well, you don't start, start from zero. Best. You get to that don't point with the fortune it. teller, and then you go to three, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Don't Flashback. start. Do not start with Dead Souls, please. Not one. Didn't, start didn't with you? Dead Souls. Didn't you like? And a lot of other people like particularly not like that one. Dead Souls is considered the worst in the series, and for good reason. Uh, the frame rate is the biggest reason. They they flood the game with zombies. Like, they flood it to the point the game's moving at, like, 12 frames. Is it just, like, a hack-and-slash-kill-zombies kind of thing? or like what? No, it's not even a hack-and-slash. It's a fucking shooting game now. Uh, it's really weird. Their 3D brawler is now turned into a shooting gallery. Okay. <laughs> it's it's not different. a good game to start on. It's definitely a game to play if you play the other games, though. I wonder when you guys, That's like... That's what I was on. I, I think it might have just been you, uh, or... It was just Somebody, me. So. Yeah, like, talking about Dead Souls, and I, like, every time you said that, I just kept thinking Dark Souls. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, In in Japan, it's called Ryuga Gotoku uh, of the End. Mm. So, yeah, very different titles there. They all have, like, subtitles in Japan, too. Um, they're just called Yakuza here. Like, um, Yakuza Zero is Yakuza... It's uh, Ryuga Gotoku, uh, the place of Oath, I believe. So... Ah, what are you going to do cool. bringing games over? Yeah, it rolls right off the tongue, I suppose. <laughs> you know, Japanese. Uh, I don't know what else I can bring up. I mean, I'd say to definitely jump into Zero if you want to get really... If you really want to get into the series. It's it's a fun. It's definitely a fun series, and it's very odd. It's very odd because... You know what's really weird is that when you get, you get into combat, right? Heat. You know how you guys have seen heat, right? You do heat actions. You've seen it, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Where I, where you hit triangle when someone's on the ground, and you like the camera zooms in and does this like crazy screen movement. Yeah. Like when you do some crazy move, heat, uh, heat. The actions are never explained outside of combat. Heat is just something people can do in combat. It's really like you think that would take you out of the experience, but it doesn't. It's really funny because. You've got a part in, like, say, Yakuza 1 when you have these dudes pointing guns at you as, like, a legitimate threat. And then, all of a sudden, you get into combat and Kazuma can take, like, ten bullets. So, it's it's very strange to just, you know, to do that. Oh, no, a gun gets shot 20 times. Yeah, no, pretty much. He, Kazuma and his climax stare where women get pregnant. That's why <laughs> I had to kick him out of Japan. So, I'm, I'm noticing, like... I don't, I don't want to keep dragging on, dragging this on if you have nothing else to talk about, but I do want to bring this up. Up. And yeah. it's like, I see, do your screenshots on Facebook and stuff. I'm seeing that there's a lot of, uh, you know, Yakuza, you know, you tell me the story, and I'm like, oh, you know, that sounds alright, cool. And then I see, like, a lot of lighthearted shit, like the the chicken and oh, naked people running okay. around and other Wait, stuff. Wait, like. alright, let's, okay, for this last couple of uh, whatever time we have left. We'll go over some sub stories because this is some fun shit. I'm just, I'm just noticing so, there's a lot of lightheartedness to it. So yes, this it's is got a, it's, it's got that Japanese comedy, you know, humor yes, big, to it. Yes, big time. In fact, in Yakuza Five, there's a part where Haruka is asked by a guy who does comedy for a living to be uh, be in her to be in his comedy show, and you have, dude, you have to be on your fucking game. You can't fuck up because people will not find you funny if you fuck up. Anyway. So, every one of the games has sub-missions. They didn't call them that, uh, sub-stories. They called them just missions, but they're sub-stories. And they're individual character stories of and people in the city. And you help, you actually help some of them sometimes, sometimes you don't. So, Yakuza, let's start with Yakuza 2. There's one in particular that really stands out, and I just did it. So, you're running along, running along, doing your thing. And you run into a bunch of Yakuza, you fight them, right? Because you're Kazuma Kiryu, and what the fuck, nothing can take you down. So, you beat them up, and the boss comes out, and he's like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'll hook you up with a really cute girl. So you go into his building, and you're like, Oh man, gonna get my dick wet. So you get in there, and then the woman's dressed, then you notice you're in like a kid's room. 
Uh, the, 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 <laughs> okay. I was, I was actually telling Jeremy about this one. And uh, you're in a kid's room, right? It looks like a kid, a room for like a five-year-old, maybe, six-year-old. Mm -hmm. And it's decorated as such. And this woman who's standing in front of you is like, what's your name? And you're like, uh, Kiryu. And you're like, what's your, what's your other, what, what's your, what was it? What's your last name? Kazuma. Okay. And then she's like, I'm going to call you Kaz Kaz. Uh, yeah? And she's mm -hmm. like, what kind of milk would you like? Breast milk or bottled milk? What? And you're like, there's a few options that pop up at this point, right? It's like, you can say, I like, no, I prefer coffee. Or, yeah, I like bottled milk or I like breast milk. Or the last option, which is what I picked, was, why? what does it matter what milk I like? And she's like, well, how else am I going to feed you? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> so he hit. So as Kazuma leaves, he accidentally trips over and hits a partition, and it knocks the wall over. And then you see the uh, crime boss, this this tough guy, right? Him and his underlings all had like, um, what are those things babies suck on? Pacifiers. Uh, yeah, yeah. They all had pacifiers, and they were in diapers, rolling around on the ground, and like goo goo ga ga. Hey man, some, and, people, some people pay a lot of money for that shit. Shut up for a second, Matt. So <laughs> as you're about, as, as you're about the, the guy's like, oh, this is the life, right? And Cosmo's like, this isn't my scene, man. I'm out of here. And so the crime boss gets up, spits his pacifier out, and he's like, what, do you don't like my, hosp my hospitality? I'm going to kill you. So you get into a fight, and you beat this guy who has more help than he should have. He's way too tough. While he's in a diaper. Yeah, while he's in a diaper, you beat up all of his underlings, too. So you beat him up, and, and then all of his underlings thank you. Thank you for beating up our boss. Maybe it'll still put some sense into him that everyone has different tastes. And that's it. <laughs> hey, you guys wearing diapers? Yeah. <laughs> you wear diapers? Get him! <laughs> that's the one that stands out in Yakuza 2 for me. It's just really... That, that one has cutscenes. It's really weird. Um... There's one. There's a lot in Zero I love, but I only go into a few. There's one where this woman you run into can't really speak Japanese too well. All of her L's, she says them like P's for some reason. So she fucks up saying stuff, and she's like, uh, no, her P's are like, no, her V's are like P's. That's right. So she says, I want this, and Kazuma's like, you want a pizza? No, she's asking for her passport. So... Pizza. Yeah, her visa... So he thinks, wow, oh, man, what's a pizza? All right, I'll go get... He's thinking to himself when he says this, by the way. So he's like, all right, I'll go get it for you. Because, cause, like, she needs it. So, Extra cheese. So he goes to the burger store. He goes to the burger, the Smile Burger, the burger restaurant. He's like, can I get one pizza? We don't sell pizza. Okay, so the person there is like, I'll order you a pizza. So you get a pizza, right? And then Cosmo is thinking to himself, wow, they deliver. What a crazy time we live in. <laughs> so anyway... You, as a Yakuza member, now have to deliver a pizza in about three minutes because it'll go bad. You know, it's it it it'll won't be hot anymore. Works. You can't you can't like how, how else are you gonna enjoy a steaming hot pizza? So you take the pizza as you lazily run over to the woman. You get to the pizza and she's like, I didn't want. I she's like, Kazuma, I finally learned how to speak proper Japanese. And she's like, What is this? Well, you wanted the pizza, right? No, I wanted my visa. I want to get out of here. I'm being forced to be a sex worker. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna force you to be a sex worker in America anyway. Go ahead, get out, get out, get get. No, no, she's trying, she's trying to go back. Get, to get. She's trying to go back to China. I think. Well, you can go back so, to China. They're gonna make her have. They're gonna make her be a sex worker anyway. Go on, girl, so, get. Okay, okay. The guy who's forcing her to be a sex worker shows up. It's like, hey, man, what are you doing? Don't go fucking around with my my merchandise or whatever. So you beat him up, right? And then he gets up and he's like, look. I didn't want you to leave, so I took your passport. I'm madly in love with you. And then she's like, oh, I don't know what to say. If Something I about stay, seeing you take all that dick. This makes me hot for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he's like, he, this dude on the spot after getting beat up is professing his love to this woman. And she's like, I don't know how to take all this in. Oh, my God. Like, what the? And then he's like, well, if you were my wife, you don't have to be a sex worker anymore. And she's like, oh, all right, I'll stay. I'll marry you. And then they all have pizza. And they're like, oh, let's celebrate. So, that you know, they have the pizza. And then the pizza guy is right behind them and is shaking his fist up like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's one way to... Or 
the dominate the, the the great the great quest called the dominatrix quest. Hey, where, hey, um, hey, why don't you why don't you leave some for the viewers to find out on their own? Damn, because <sighs> one I wanted to, this last one. So no, I want to go over at least one more after this. So there's this dominatrix you you run into, right? And she's like, I'm not very. There's this dude who's like, you're not good at being a dominatrix. I, I can't do this. And she's like, oh, man. So Kazuma Kiryu's in the neighborhood and helps her out to be a dominatrix. So you go to the children's park, right? And you got to start doing dominatrix stuff where you have to act out. And there's kids watching. So you're like, oh, yeah, I really... Please give it to me harder. And he's just like, man, I can't do this. So eventually you give her some tips in front of these kids. You go back to her sex dungeon and... <laughs> The guy who has told her, you're just not a good dominatrix. You stay in the room as all this is happening, by the way, when this guy shows up. And then she says all the lines that you say. And the guy's like, who's that? Oh, that's just, uh, that's a guy who's going to watch us. Oh. So that's how she becomes a good dominatrix. I'm leaving out some parts, but that's pretty much it. At least on the last imagination. And the, no, the last quest I'll bring up, this one's great. You, you said have that two to quests get... ago. No, this is the last one. <laughs> you have to get a porn magazine for a 10-year-old. So you're running along, doing your thing, the and then there's this Sega? kid. So there's this kid. He's like, I really want to get what's inside that shrink wrap. Uh, I want to get. I want to. I want that shrink wrap magazine, Mister. And then Kirio goes to look at, it, and he's like, Oh, you don't. You don't want that. Well, why not? Well, you just don't. And then he's like, Oh, I really want to know. All these adults really want it and stuff. And it's and it's got to be important if it's wrapped up. And he's like thinking to himself. Man, if I don't get this for this kid, I'm going to be another lying adult. Like, when I was younger, they would lie to me. So he takes up the sol the um, he takes up the noble quest of getting a porn magazine for a kid. So before he could do that, there's four women, right? Uh, also, the fifth woman who works for you, your real estate company. They just all happen to be there, and you have to stealth past them uh, to get to the, the, the magazine, you see. You grown ass man, uh, take the damn magazine, give it to the kid. No, Who no, gives a fuck? No, he doesn't want to be embarrassed. So, grown ass uh, man. these these women are literally circling like around the building, and you have to get past them. And the woman who works with you at your real estate company is like, "Oh, Mister Kiryu, what are you doing here at Third Park?" She's like, "Oh, I'm," and she tells him, "Oh, I'm just hanging out, you know, doing whatever. Just don't mind me." So she walks back and forth, making sure, uh, you know. I don't know, just walking back and forth. So you have to stealth past them. You eventually get the magazine, you tell the kid, don't leave it under your bed. They'll find it. And he's like, why? Don't worry, that's for later. And then you can go back to that same magazine um, place, and you could buy one of those magazines, and when you look at it, it raises your heat. That kid's probably going to grow up to be some sort of pervert. Sex <laughs> yeah. fiend. So yes, yeah, these, are, yeah. these are just some of the uh, side quests. The, the going ons in uh... Kamurocho are pretty crazy. Yeah. If you wanted to, there's some examples, Matt. It just, it just gets more. It's so ridiculous every game. So, so, so you want to do a quick recap before we shut this down? And Yakuza. Mm. Not really. One through four being reprinted. Oh yeah, one to four being reprinted. Zero just came out. It's a fantastic time to be a Yakuza fan in the West. Five is available digitally. Digitally, six is available, I guess, physically. Uh, six is not out yet. No, no, no out. Not, not here. Yeah, it's, it's not out here yet. But it is coming here physically. Yes, and the remake for one is coming here physical, physically as well. There you go. Virtual Fighter Five being on there. Good six, time. yes. <clears throat> Virtual. Yeah, okay. In six, in six, in Yakuza six. There you go, Yakuza Zero. Any any last any any last things you want to say there, Jeff? Just buy the game. It's great. You'll have a good time. I guarantee it. It's really weird for games that are set up like JRPGs too. And how often can you buy a brand new PS2 game? Mm. Yeah, Think how often it. does that happen? Often. I don't know. I was just making that up. Okay, cool. So before before we end this, I just wanted to ask you guys personally: you, you guys been uh, playing anything interesting lately besides Yakuza? Yeah. Gr Gravity Rush Two. Oh, Gravity Rush Two. Okay. Um. Yeah. Neo. Uh. I've been playing Neo Berserk and uh, the Band of the Hawk because Berserk demanded me 
he told me to play it in Gravity Rush 2. Why are you gonna take my answer, man? Sorry, I've just been playing. <laughs> go play, too. go play your own fucking games. God. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Berserk and Band of, the, by the way, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. What, a, what a great guy. Berserk oh, is. uh, I forgot to mention another one I was playing. Uh, fucking, uh, Fate Extella. Fate, Fate Extella. What the fuck is yeah, it called? Extella. Fate, Fate Extella. Whatever. It's a good fucking game. It's fun. I like it. All right, and uh, I've been uh. It's not anything new, but uh, I've been getting more use out of my Wii U since the Switch is coming out soon. Yay! And or, of course. Me, me and Tammy have actually been playing uh, rank battles together in Splatoon. And lame. We've been doing pretty good, and you might not say lame to this one, because you know, I know Jeremy knows, and I think Jeff knows too that I've never beaten Wind Waker, so I've been dedicating what? about yeah, I've been dedicating about like oh, two I to didn't three. Know that. Yeah, uh, I know Jeremy knew. But I've been dedicating like two to three hours a night to, uh, you know, playing a, playing a little bit of Wind Waker, and uh, I'm up to the part where uh, you go back to, I guess, like Harrow Castle when it's like all like frozen in time and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up there now. I was playing, uh, had a CQ shift not too long ago, and I was playing like for five to six hours. Are you getting all the point. statues? Uh, bro, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, so you're, <laughs> so you're there. Did you, did you, did you do the thing yet? I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just got there, and I, I kind of ended it there because uh, CQ was kind of. I was getting uh, sidetracked by leadership, so I was like, alright, I'm just gonna stop playing the game well, for now. Keep, keep playing, do what you gotta do there, and then you'll be in for a, a fun romp around the world. But yeah, I find, collecting shit. I forgot how fun that game is. I mean, I never... A little backstory why I never beat it is because uh, I never owned the game. I borrowed it from Fred, and he wanted it back one day, so I was like, you know what, here you go. And actually, a fun, fun fact is that when I gave him back the game, I got I was exactly at the part I'm at now, so everything, actually, everything from this point is new to me. Actually, wait, no, you're, after you get what you need to get there, you don't go for on a fun romp. You go fucking, you go to two dungeons, you do two things, and then you go on the fun romp around the world. But yeah, so, but I'm... Collecting shit. I'm literally, if I still had the save data on my GameCube memory card, I'm literally at the same spot. I left off on the GameCube version, so... I mean, I'm having fun with it. I mean, I don't know why I ever put Wind Waker down. It's, it's a good game. It's a good game. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't either. It's fucking, fucking. It is a great game. It's one of my favorite Zeldas. But that's not what this is about. No, it's, a, it's about Yakuza. But you know, sometimes you just gotta, you know, segue into something else real quick. You know, just real quick. But uh, you know, thank you guys for listening. That was uh, that was Jeff talking about Yakuza Zero. Me and Jeremy knew nothing about it. It was uh, actually interesting to hear about it. Well, Jeremy knew a little more about it. Yeah, than he, I'm, I'm just completely ignorant when it comes to Yakuza. But it's, it's interesting to hear about it. Talk about things I don't know about. And uh, indeed. You know, sounds like a nice, lighthearted, but yet hardcore series. So it's it's lighthearted, but it has a serious crime drama narrative, especially in five. And you become a, you're trying to become an idol, and you have dance battles as a little girl. All right, this is yep. gay. Ending podcast. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right, guys, oh, thanks for listening. Whoa. Like, subscribe. Look us up on Facebook. Turbo Select DX. Yeah. <laughs>